Hi, welcome to the Daily Aviation Channel. I'm Mark, and the aircraft you see here is the Bell X-1. It may seem rather simple, yet it is considered one of the most important aircraft in the history of aeronautics. First called XS-1, and then renamed X-1, it was the first aircraft to cross the sound barrier. Developed specifically for this purpose, it was built in the mid-1940s, and was the first experimental aircraft in NASA's X-Plane series. Looking like a rifle bullet with small wings and a rocket engine, it was designed to be dropped at a high altitude from another aircraft. On March 16, 1945, the United States Army Air Forces and the NACA, the ancestor of NASA, contracted with Bell Aircraft Corporation for the construction of three X-1 rocket planes with the goal of collecting data on supersonic flight conditions. To draw the X-1 fuselage, Bell engineers who lacked information and experience about supersonic flights decided to take inspiration from a 50 caliber BMG bullet, this type of ammunition being stable at supersonic speed. But because of its unusual form, the pilot found himself sitting in a narrow cabin and lodged directly in the nose of the X-1. The rocket engine selected by Bell Engineers was the XLR-11 RM3, provided by Reaction Motors Incorporated. It ran on a mixture of ethanol and liquid oxygen and was at the time one of the most powerful engines of its kind. But the X-1's extremely short range, only 2 minutes and 30 seconds of operation, did not allow the aircraft to take off on its own and required a high-altitude drop from a Boeing B-29A Superfortress, modified specifically for the X-1. The X-1 flew for the first time on January 25, 1946, but because of many delays, its first flights were simple gliding flights where the plane was dropped from 6 kilometers. The first engined flight did not occur until December 1946. On June 24, 1947, the Army Air Forces, dissatisfied with the delay that the project is taking, decided to cancel its contract with Bell and directly assigns the X-1 test to its flight test division to get faster results. Thus, October 14, 1947, at precisely 10.18 a.m., Captain Chuck Yeager, who was only 24 at the time, performed with his X-1, nicknamed Glorious Glennis, the first horizontal supersonic flight in history. Although the day before he had broken two ribs after a horse riding accident, Chuck Yeager managed to reach the speed of Mach 1.06 and entered into history as the first man to have ever exceeded the speed of sound in level flight. At the time, however, because of the Cold War, this feat was kept secret and would not be made known until several months later, following a leak in the U.S. press. To explore other aspects of supersonic flight, five different versions of the X-1 were developed. Among these versions, the Bell X-1A was one of the most important. Commissioned by the Air Force in April 1948, the X-1A was designed to study aerodynamic phenomena occurring at speeds above Mach 2. It was longer and heavier than the original X-1, but was equipped with the same type of rocket engine. The X-1A was so fast compared to the X-1 that on December 12, 1953, Chuck Yeager, on board his X-1A, set a new speed record at Mach 2.44. But a few moments after his record and because of the phenomenon of inertia coupling, his aircraft became uncontrollable. The X-1A quickly lost altitude, and during the descent, Chuck Yeager was exposed to accelerations up to 8G. These accelerations were so violent that his helmet even broke the aircraft canopy. Thanks to his experience, Jaeger managed to regain control of his aircraft and landed safely a few minutes later. Despite the dramatic accidents it has experienced, the X-1 program is considered a success and has served as the basis for not only all of the following X-plane programs, such as the X-2 or the X-3 Stiletto, but also for aviation in general. The procedures developed by NACA during the X-1 trials also greatly facilitated the development of NASA's space program in the 1960s. Today, Chuck Yeager's original Bell X-1, Glamorous Glennis, is currently displayed at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. 
kept in the Milestones of Flight gallery of the museum. It is displayed alongside other aircraft, famous in the history of aviation. That's the end of this video. I hope you liked it. If you haven't done it yet, don't hesitate to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's free. You can also watch my other videos, and if you like my work, you can support me on Patreon to help me produce more content like this. Thanks, and stay tuned for the next video.